have our very own Uncle Fola Tinungu, who is the um, Managing Director of Primero Transportation Limited. That's the company that runs the BRT, which, and we have, we're, we're such an honor to have him with us today. Um, we'll be waiting for our participants to join in, like they like, they like Nigerian time a lot, so, but they will come in in a few minutes time. Our students uh, joining in already, I'd like to thank you. Um, I know that Uncle Fola is very busy, so I won't, I don't want to delay him so much. This is being streamed live and recorded, so um, <clears throat> the students will eventually watch it later on. But we'll start right now. So Uncle Fola, you can unmute, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you once again for taking our time to to be with us this this afternoon. Um, I'd like you to personally introduce yourself to our our teenagers. Okay. Uh, my name is Fola Chinumbu. I'm the managing director for Primary Transport Services, the operator of BRT or uh, the Blue BRT buses. We run from Ikorodu to TBS, Ikorodu to Oshodi, Ikorodu to Ikeja, and also Oshodi to Abuli Egba right now. We wow. have a fleet just 500 buses, about 500, and we plan to add maybe another 200 to 250 by the end of the year. Wow. So we the network. So, okay. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes, sir, please, can you give us an idea of how you came into transportation? And why why you went into transportation? Actually, okay. Actually, I uh, went into transportation um, in a back way because uh, my career uh, was actually in banking. I was in mortgage banking for twenty one years in America, and wow. when I came to back to Nigeria about ten years ago, I started looking for what to do. Mortgage banking was not happening in uh, in Nigeria, yeah. and um, we saw an uh, RFP request for uh, public interest in newspaper that Lagos State put in uh, in the newspaper asking for uh, people who, that wants to operate buses. A couple of my friends and I started talking to each other about it, and uh, we approached them. We submitted a bid and we liked what we saw and our bid was accepted. And lo and behold, I became the number one bus conductor in Lagos State. <laughs> it, was not, it was not actually planned. I, I more or less stumbled in. Okay, sir. So one thing um, I'd like our students to learn from this is that where there are problems, there are opportunities. Uh, have been in, it's five, six years now. Okay, sir. It's been very, uh, uh, it's been very challenging. Can you hear yes. me? Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So, yes, I was saying one thing that our students can learn from this is that where there are problems, where there are challenges, there are always opportunities. And you, you oh, were able to get the opportunity. You saw the challenge and you you got the opportunity and now you're you're making a big difference in Lagos State. So I'd like to ask. Oh, definitely. No. Yeah, go ahead, sir. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So there's a program I usually run um, uh, with GSS three students mostly, and it's called My Community and I. 
And there I define a career as um, a, an expression of who I am in service to community, where my community can be as small as my home and as big as the entire world. And so one of the things I like to point out to them is that wherever you are, there's an important, what you're doing is important because if you're not doing it, then something is missing. So I'd like you to tell us that what you're doing with Primero and the BRT, why is it so important to, to our society? It's, it's uh, look, transportation is the backbone of the economy. Without transportation, the economy cannot function because people need to move from point A to point B. Your students, they need to move from, uh, they need to go to school. Without public transportation, most of them can't get to school. And their parents also have to go to work. Without public transportation, most of them will not be able to get to work. And uh, the market women, everybody depends on transportation to move from point A to point B. And it's a backbone. And that's what I've been telling the Lagos State government and I've been trying to tell the Nigerian government that you need to get the public transport system right. Because if you get it right, the economy will boom. Yes, sir. Because without without public transport system, the economy cannot function. So uh, the backbone of any economy is the public transportation system. system. Yes, sir. So you are saying now that you have 500 buses on the road now, and by the end of the year, you'll have another 250 coming in. And so that is actually a, a um, that's creating more employment for some people. So I'd like to, because yes. here in Nigeria, when people hear um, like bus driver and things, you know, the, we, you know, the picture that we have is usually the yellow buses, you know, and we mm -hmm. don't really have, I mean, they're, they're serving a, a, a good function. But it's just that the the perception around it and the way it runs, you know, it's not so encouraging for a young person to think of taking up a career in in transportation. So I'd like you to give us like what are the kind of areas, what is the, the value chain, the different areas within the transportation industry. And at the moment, we're even still just only talking about road transportation now. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely the uh, the value chain is wide. In fact, um, I'm happy to tell you all to tell all the young people that almost all Nigerian universities now are offering uh, courses in transportation. They are all setting up the Department of Transportation. There's one at Lasso. There's one at Ladoke Akintola. There's one at uh, Futek in Akure. I think like uh, even Unilag is about to set up one. Look. It runs all the gap, you know, gumlets. You can, you know, in transportation, you can, you know, yeah, we have computer scientists that are running our, our IT systems. We have uh, people in our warehouse or the, or the studied warehouse management. We have mechanics, auto mechanics. Mm -hmm. We have uh, people in advertising that are doing our advertising. We have, um, People even in real estate develop. In, we have a real estate section that are developing real estate, and we have we're about to set up uh, something to start uh, manufacturing uh, small uh, small parts that we are using in Nigeria. So mm -hmm. it runs the old gamlets in ticketing. We are now we've gone to e-ticketing now, and you know we have people uh, in e in in e-ticketing, and most of them are young graduate because everything we do is technology or uh, technologically driven now i keep telling everybody that we are a technology company that happens to run buses we're not a bus company that <laughs> happens to use technology because we have so many analysts in our uh, in our office you'll be you'll be surprised when you come in and you see all these young people they're all uh, graduates with masters some of them in fact, a couple of them with phd you know, working for us, they are all analysts looking at data, running data, and doing you know, so many things. So the you know the opportunity is very vast. See, before 
the transportation space in Nigeria, you are right, was made of, of uh, Danfo and Okada. But what we are doing is to change the paradigm. Or we are trying to change the paradigm of transportation and trying to do exactly what they do all over the world. So that that way, you know, we bring experts in different fields together to drive the or uh, to drive the or uh, to drive the whole thing. And so far, it's been it's you know it's very interesting. Uh, and I'm happy, like I said earlier, that Nigerian universities are now tapping into it because they're all setting up of transport schools and they're all you know and there's so many things you can do in transport schools it's it, 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 in fact it's unbelievable the opportunity available it's not just driving see what people see is the buses going up and down but there's mm. so much going on in the background yeah. beside you know beside it that it's it's mind-boggling yes so i know at least in in transportation there's the water there's the rail there's um uh, there's aviation and also there's um a, even even with water i know uh, about laswa so i i are you are you in partnership with with laswa as well actually we are actually we are thinking of uh, bringing ferries now start running what uh, uh ferries on the on lagos waters also so wow. we will be in partnership with La because we want to be in all aspects of transportation, you know, uh, and like you already said, uh, when people think about transportation, they only think about uh, road transport, but you know, there's water, there's uh, air, there's uh, rail, the and the rail is coming along gradually in Nigeria right now. Rail yeah. is very, very expensive to embark on, so the government yeah. has to uh, take Provide the lead. Provide infrastructure. On, the lead on that. Okay, sir. But so, you know, it's very it's a very very interesting field and very challenging field. Also. Okay, sir. So, as you were saying, um, you said there there's so the value chain is quite wide. So now we actually have mm -hmm. we have junior students here. So GSS from GS one to GS three, and then we have senior secondary school students here as well. So for the G junior students um what could you say so if they were going into senior secondary school where they're going to be focusing on they would have to nail down their their specialization areas to uh, arts science or commerce so what would you advise our junior students to be looking at i guess it will also depend on what area they're going into precisely it depends on what they what they what what interests them if they're if it's if, you know, if it's the uh, computer side of the business, then they have to, you know, they they have to make sure they probably uh, pick it up uh, subjects that they can get to university to, uh, to to do computer science or information or information uh, management system. You know, if it's uh, mechanical or you know that's in, that interests them. Then they have to do something like uh, physics and uh, and all that kind of stuff, you know. Because look, we have uh, a big uh, yard that we that they repair the buses and and uh, you know some of our top mechanics are making more money than bankers. <laughs> wow! So it's it, it just depends on uh, what uh what they are interested in and what they uh what they want to be you know, what they want to do so because we we use both arts students and science students science depending students. on uh, what part of you uh, you are interested in okay okay so okay so it also if they're going to since you said there are now schools of um transportation in the university system as well so that's also another area that they can be looking at but in that within within the school of transportation itself so what what kind of courses are in those in those um like in those departments oh logistics there's our business administration there's our warehouse management there's our, our mechanical uh, there's our 
in, uh, information technology department uh, in there. So, you know, so each school, you know, especially last school that I'm very uh, familiar with, they have, you know, almost it's like the university in itself. That's cool because it, it consists. Okay. Okay. So apart from. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just it's breaking up a little, but uh, we're getting we're getting the flow. So what you are saying is that the school of transportation is almost is like a mini university on its own because there are those different areas that they can study within yes. that within the sector of transportation. Okay, so then what are the what kind of soft skills do you think students should develop if they're going to um, go into work, work within the transportation industry? The most important thing that uh, they need to develop is their work ethics. Because mm. I'm telling you, it does not matter what aspect of it. You have to be, you know, you, um, no employer wants to employ somebody that is not diligent, that is not hardworking, uh, that is indolent or that cannot take in initiatives themselves. We need people that can think on their feet because we're now going, or we're now in the 21st century. It's not, you know, it's not, it wasn't like when we were young. When, when I was young, there were, you know, when you go to university, you know, you're either, everything was straightforward. You're either an engineer or a lawyer or a doctor or something like that. But now the opportunities are so, you know, so vast. But it just depends on what the uh, what interest each one of them have. But they must be self uh, self starter, self sufficient. You know, nobody wants somebody that you have to spoon feed. You have to be able to think on your feet and be able to be a go getter and be able to do things on your own with little or very little supervision. Supervision. Okay, sir. So apart from that then, so what are the challenges at the moment within the, the profession? And then um, where what the, the prospects then? So the challenges and then the prospects, because some of our children, I mean, it will take them before they get into that sector now, uh, it will take them, if they're in, in senior classes now, let's say another five to six years, they should be in the labor market. So by then, what, how do you think the, the transportation space will be looking for them? I actually think it will even be much better than it is right now. Because like I said, what we what Primary is trying to do is to change the paradigm of transportation in Nigeria. And we are already going towards it. And Lagos State Government came up with a policy last year they picked four other companies to, uh, to run organized uh, bus services in uh, Lagos, and also they picked some companies to do organized ferries in Lagos. So the investments that, you know, the money that is pouring into the sector is huge. Because I'll give you an example. Two years ago, exactly. Next or uh, two uh, months ago, we went to the capital to the capital market to raise money for public transportation, and we were able to raise 16.5 billion for the capital wow. market. Believe in us to give us that kind of money. That means uh, the uh, the are seeing uh, the difference the and the money that is pouring in into that sector is huge. So as money continues to come in, people will continue, you know that sector will continue to grow. And as by the time they come out of our uh, university, they you know the, the space will even be more robust than it is right now. Mm. Okay, sir. So um, I mean, this is a little bit uh, very long. I'd like to find out when when you say we're changing 
the the face of transportation. Uh, so my I do worry sometimes about okay, what are we going to do with so with the with the downfall buses or and the people who drive the downfall buses, the people who who bring in the downfall buses, what what is what is their um how are you engaging or how is the Lagos State government engaging with them? That's a legal state government issue. It's not a private or private company's issue. But mm. technology, it, look, technology provides opportunity for some people and it displaces some people. some people. But that does not mean we should not, you know, we should bury our heads in uh, sand and pretend technology is not around. So as we become technologically more advanced, there are so more people that will be displaced. The technology is very disruptive. But it yeah. also creates opportunities. You know, yeah. look, uh, five years ago, we could not be having this conversation the way we are having. I mean, my car, and I'm talking to all of you, it's yes. because of technology. This technology yes. did not exist five years ago. Five years ago, we would have had to come to somewhere in one room for me to talk to all of you. But here I am, and you are streaming it live. So, yes, sir. technology, uh, you know, presents opportunities. The key is, are you ready to take advantage of the opportunities? Yes, the downfall uh, people may be displaced, but we need to ask ourselves, do we want to continue running a downfall economy or do we want to run a, a world-class economy? I'll give you another example. Um, about two years ago, there were yellow cabs all over Lagos. But mm. now Uber seems to have displaced them because Uber, you don't even have to get to, before before you get the taxi, you have to go to the side of the street and wait at the side of the street to you know to wait for the uh, yeah, or the yellow cab. Yellow cab yeah. but now in your house, you call for Uber, it comes straight in front of your house. Mm -hmm. I'll take you and take you to where you, yeah. you are going. Yeah. So that's technology for you. So technology is very, very disruptive. But it also, also creates opportunities. You well educated, strongly educated to take advantage of the opportunity. Okay, sir. So I know you are really, really busy. So I thank you so much for your time. So I'd like you to give um, some words of advice to our young people now. Can you repeat that, please? Yes, I was saying, could you give um, uh, some uh, words of advice to our young people, general, just generally? Mm. Hello, sir. You don't have to settle. You need to, something has been done that way. That's not what I mean, that's the, that's the best way to do it. You need to be able to be bold and challenge the orthodoxy and go out into the world and change the world. Change the world. I saw online today, this Nigerian guy that went to Japan. Uh, yes. And uh, got a first class in math, mathematics in uh, Japan, which has not been done in about 50 something years. And it created uh, one car that was showing on- An electric so, no, car. The world is right, you know, it's yours. Yes, yes. So the world is yours. You need to be bold. You need to go out there boldly. Don't be afraid. Don't allow people to tell you it cannot be done. Because they've been doing it one way, you know, for years does not mean that's the only way it could be done. And that's, that does not mean that's the best way to, to do it. The mm. people making billions today are the ones challenging the orthodoxy. You know, asking that question, why? Why do we have to do it that way? Why can't you do it different? Why can't you do something different? Why can't you do, look at it? So they need to be very bold and don't settle. You need to be asking yourself that question. Why? Why can't we do it different? Okay, so I'm asking, I'd like the students to, in case they have any questions, Students, if you have any questions, let's um, send it to the chat or why can just I, why can we do, ask. Why can we do it better? Don't settle. 
So Uncle Fala's um, advice to us is to be bold. Can you repeat? And also, okay, yes, I can hear. So I have a question from Baba Lola Aishat. Baba Lola Aishat, please, um, what's yes. your question? What is the contribution of technology in other aspects of transportation apart from road? Okay. Well, tech, okay, technology is being used everywhere. Um, even the uh, ferries, even the ferries uh, now, they, they've gone to e-ticketing now, okay? Which is technology. And they're using it uh, to build a more faster, versatile, and safer boats. The same thing with rail, the same thing with, you know, so technology is driving all aspects of transportation. Okay, sir. Are there any more questions? Baba Lola, is your, has your question been answered? Yes, ma. Thank you, ma. Oh, okay. Are there any other questions? If there are no other questions, can we all um, unmute and say thank you to Uncle Fala for taking our time to speak with us? So let's unmute and say thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Uncle Fala, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for taking our time to be with us even with your busy, uh, busy schedule. And we wish you all the best as well. I'm going to stay in touch with you because maybe I can also become yeah. a conductor. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Amen. And you too, sir. Bye, sir. Okay, so students, um, there's something else I would just like to show you um uh i i had asked for i had actually asked for um i had written to the school of maritime academy as well as um one of the aviation schools here in lagos but i didn't get a response but i did try to find out a few things so i just like to share with you that oops uh not facebook i'd like to share with you the maritime academy i don't know can you all see what's going on can you see my screen yes ma'am okay good so we have the maritime academy and they they that's uh, for shipping and you can go to their website if you try if you just type in maritime academy of nigeria it's in oron yeah and you can go and check what they have it's uh you can get uh ond and hnd there in different courses i'm trying to okay so they're professional courses they're different schools where you can where you can um, study the school of see school of nautical studies school of marine engineering school of maritime transport so though that's that's something that you can look at in the transportation industry um then there's also okay there there are some schools of aviation we know the one i don't most of you must have heard the one of uh, in zaria but there's still other ones as well. So if you want to check that out, just here, I just did um, aviation schools in Nigeria and you can find out, you can, um, you can do some research on that. Then also there's something in a freight, a diploma in freight forwarding and supply chain management. Uh, this is a, a diploma course. It's been, it's been run at uh, Unilag and you just need your, your WIAC certi certificate to, to get admission for that, right? So with that, um, I think, let's see the, 
the requirements, your WAEC, NECO, GCE, you need your maths, your math and English. And, and so just five, five credits, including maths and English, that's what you need. So these are just a few of the areas in, um, in, in transportation. I think also there's a school of, let's see, railway okay there's a railway academy also the real railway technical institute so you can go and check check all these things if you're interested in the transportation industry you will see that if you're if you're actually following the news you'd see that the government is investing heavily in in transportation in railway transportation in even in lagos state the other day they did the groundbreaking for the red line. So there's heavy, heavy um, investment in transportation industry, both, both at federal and at state level. And so if you're interested in that, and you heard from Uncle Fola, there are different areas. You can do the business management, you can do the computer science, you can do a mechanical engineering, whatever it is, and you get uh, data analysis. If you, if you had taken, um, Yesterday, in the business management side, there was there was a data analyst there, and um, he was talking about the importance of data analysis to business. And you heard what Uncle Fala also said about their room with lots of where they have lots of data analysts. So there's so much potential in the transportation industry, which I hope that you will take up. So we're going to end today. We're going to end uh, our session today. Um, tomorrow is our final day for the careers fair. We have uh, two sessions. The first session in the morning, nine o'clock. Concurrently, we'll be running um, we'll be running STEM and government government and public administration. That will be nine to eleven a.m. Uh, then. In government, in government, in government and public administration uh, group, I have uh, a retired naval officer, and he will be talking about careers in the military. So, if you're interested in that, you should be there. I also have someone from foreign services and uh, someone in the civil service who will be speaking with you. In in STEM. We'll have, uh, I have someone from uh, the Meteorological um, Institute, sorry, hold on, let me look at it properly before I say the wrong thing. So yes, we have the Nigerian, somebody working from uh, Nigerian Meteorological Agency. I also have um, engineer Felicia Agubata, she she is a flight engineer, if you're interested in that. I have a researcher in Greek. Then I have two people in the IT um, sector. Um, then in the afternoon, we have health science. I have a, a doctor, a medical laboratory scientist, and a, a lecturer in anatomy. And I have a nursing student. He, if he, he said they're preparing for exams, so if there are no impromptu lectures, he'll be here, he'll be online as well. So um, you re really don't want to miss tomorrow. So I hope to see you all tomorrow. Finally, on Friday, we are going to be on our Google platform, Google Classroom, and we'll be doing a career plan coaching session. So you're going to draw up your career plans, what you want to achieve in the next few years, what you hope to learn, what you, where you're going to study and things like that. We'll have one for, the, for juniors and one for seniors. So um, yeah, take out that time. I'd like to say thank you for coming this afternoon. Thank you for showing up this afternoon. If you have any questions, um, let me know. If not, we'll just round up for today. Any questions, please? Okay, since there are no questions, I would like to say goodbye to everyone. Unmute and say goodbye, please. Goodbye, Ma.
<laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Hope you hope you learned something today. Bye, ma. Yes, ma. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. Stay blessed. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, ma. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye, ma. Thank you, ma.